On warm summer evenings through the second half of the 20th century, thousands of Evansville residents would venture to the west side. For over five decades, Mesker Amphitheater played host to nationally known music acts, local music groups, comedians, and even outdoor movies. While the future of the amphitheater remains uncertain, many Evansville residents hold fond memories of summer fun at this historic outdoor concert venue. I think the amphitheater is uh, a great symbol for the west side. I think it's important, but not just for the west side, for the entire city. Uh, obviously, the history that it has with the city, it, it's, uh, it's important for the city. The site that we think of Mesker Amphitheater today is actually the second amphitheater once located at Mesker Park. The original amphitheater was located in the zoo, approximately where the Klee building is currently located. First plans of an open-aired venue came from Evansville's mayor, Frank Greasy. In the depths of the Great Depression, he hoped to give jobs to many of the unemployed men in this area. This was part of Greasy's pay-for-work project. It was a project whose aim was to help local families during the hard times of the Great Depression. Mayor Greasy wanted the amphitheater to resemble St. Louis's open-air venue that was located in Forest Park, Missouri. He even had inspectors survey the Forest Park venue in hopes to get an idea for Evansville's own amphitheater. After a denial by Indiana's Governor McNutt, Mayor Greasy was advised by the state to drop the project. The idea was then brought to the Kiwanis Club, who sponsored and built a small-scale version of the venue in fall of 1933 and completely finished the actual site in the spring of 1934. It consisted of a stage structure that resembled a castle, which was made of brick at the base. The stage faced a grassy knoll where up to 7,000 spectators could sit. The zoo mainly used the facility for animal shows, yet other small acts would be held on stage in years later. The original amphitheater was used until the early 1950s when it was replaced by the much larger theater with wooden seats and a more professional stage. A newly constructed amphitheater was later considered after the death of George L. Mesker in 1936. Mesker left $500,000 towards updating the zoo and a construction of a newly built amphitheater. Funding for the new project was questioned for many years by Evansville attorneys and other influential organizations in the city. However, the final plans for the new amphitheater were eventually approved by the Parks Board. Charles E. Day won the bid of engineering and constructing the new Mesker Park Amphitheater. In September of 1950, almost two decades after the idea originated with Mayor Greasy, construction finally began on top of Mesker Park Hill. In October 1951, a strike by the Bricklayers Union would delay progress for approximately four months. After almost a year and a half of work and delays, Mesker Park Amphitheater was finally finished on June 15, 1952. The completed venue had a brand new stage complete with dressing rooms underneath. There were larger permanent columns in the original design and riggings to allow performances to be well lit. The new amphitheater could seat 5,500 spectators in chairbacks and another 3,000 on the lawn facing the stage. In the early years, Mesker Park provided families with fun-filled entertainment. During the 50s and 60s, it brought many fans to the area to see shows and also to visit Mesker Park Zoo. Many big-name stars, including Jeanette McDonald, Ry Stevens, and Eleanor Stieber were booked early on to perform at the new venue. Local church groups, choirs, and theatrical groups also used Mesker. Through the years, the amphitheater attracted performers, orchestras, and plays to the West Side community. After two decades, the outdoor facility began showing its age. Before the summer of 1972, the Evansville's Parks Board decided to shut it down for the summer and possibly for good. Deterioration was a big factor in the decision to close. But soon after, new ideas about renovating began to arise. Eventually, the Parks Board in Evansville decided to renovate the then rundown venue, and the facility came to resemble the amphitheater that we know today. After the renovation in 1973, Mesker again vastly grew, and bigger name acts were stopping in Evansville for one-night shows during the summers. I, I did attend a number of events at Mesker, but it was back in high school and college, so I don't remember all of them. But uh, Actually, one of the sort of funniest uh, stories that I remember is one of my sisters attending a Bobby Sherman concert uh, that would have been in the 1970s. He was the heartthrob of the day, and it was a big deal for my sister to get to go to the con that concert at Mesker Amphitheaters. Quickly, Mesker became once again known for its outdoor scenery and the open-air charm that it was once popular for. I mean, that's the neatest thing about the whole thing, it was outside. So you had people sitting on the hillside, people in the chairs. Uh, you always had the barbecue smell, I mean, the hamburgers you could smell when you were playing. And uh, it was absolutely wonderful. There's not enough good things to say about it.
Along with a newly renovated stage, Mesker Park got a new name. It would now be known as Mesker Music Theater. By the 1980s, the theater was back in its prime and playing host to headlining acts that would draw many different types of fans. Mesker Music Theater hosted such acts as Kiss, Ozzy Osbourne, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Motley Crue, B.B. King, and many more. Mesker was great for all types of music, bringing success for the local venue. Fans in the local community and the surrounding area loved the theater because of its unique characteristics. It was one of the few open-aired concert facilities near the city of Evansville. As the Mesker Music Theater entered the 1990s, big-name acts were still rocking one-night shows, with bands such as ZZ Top, Creed, and Great White rocking to sell out crowds. KISS even returned for a chance to rock the venue. Even though big name acts were playing here, Mesker was also known to hold local events and concerts set up by local radio stations. So we came up with what we called Mother Mesker's Homemade Jam. We did nine of them, um, which sometimes a couple per summer. It wasn't necessarily, necessarily over a nine year period, but each one featured um, half a dozen or eight, maybe eight local bands. We just charged a dollar three, the station's frequency to get in. And, um, you know, we were pretty successful. We had a couple thousand people at uh, each one, and it gave uh, hometown bands a chance, you know, to play their own music in front of, uh, front of a crowd. By the turn of the century, big-name acts at Mesker became scarce, and the venue was used for more local movie nights and many other local events. Throughout the active years of the amphitheater, memories were made for local fans, some that will never be forgotten. One of my most memorable, and these are probably artists that, a lot of people that are pretty young wouldn't know uh, Foghat, who had a big hit with a song called Slow Ride, uh, and uh, the Pat Travers Band. Um, uh, radio station sponsored show, probably in 1981 or two. We were sitting on the side of the stage, sitting on the band's road cases, watching the show, you know, up close. That was really cool. Numerous local bands performed at the facility, which provided a professional like feel to the performances. Oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome venue. I mean, if you ever get a chance to play out there, it's wonderful. I mean, first of all, it's open air, which is the absolute best. Uh, the stage was huge, so you usually had a really nice PA. Um, it was a blast. I mean, all I, all I can say is it's just an absolute blast. By 2010, the amphitheater began to quickly deteriorate, and the future of the facility became questioned by many in the city, primarily by those of the West Side community. In 2012, the amphitheater closed due to lack of use and extreme deterioration. Nearby residents have wondered why the once-loved facility has been left untouched for the past decade. Locals have expressed that they would like to see Mesker used again for either local community events or big-name acts once more. Well, ideally, I'd, I'd like to see it restored uh, so it could be used again. We'd love for the opportunity to have the zoo itself actually take over the management and operation of the zoo and have it become a uh, revenue stream or revenue source for the zoo. Unfortunately, the future of this iconic venue remains in question. But for close to 40 years, Mesker Music Theater has been a local venue where friends and families have gathered to see acts of entertainment, and it has been the cause of many long-lasting memories. Hopefully, its charm can once again be realized for the next generation of potential fans.